Have you ever found Dorito fingers in your white bed sheets? Or maybe a broken mug in the trash can of your Airbnb? Or maybe even a wine stain on your brand new rug? Well, you may be entitled to a damage claim with Airbnb that you'll file and then they won't pay out and then your guests will leave you a three-star review anyway. Does this sound familiar? Have you ever been in this situation? Because this is a situation that most Airbnb and short-term rental hosts are gonna encounter at some point in their journey. So that's what we're gonna be talking about on today's episode of Rob Built. When should you charge a guest? When should you not charge a guest? And the different ramifications of actually filing a claim through Airbnb. Is it worth it? Is it not? But before we get too far into the video, but before, well, we let him pass. <laughs> but before we get too far into it, today's video is brought to you by Oh God. <laughs> All right, so spoiler alert, the crazy noise with the Alato Man and the dog, it never ended, okay? So this video is brought to you by Guesty. Ding. <laughs> All right, now back to the real video. You know, mama say all them alligators mad because they got all them teeth but no toothbrush. Well, yo mama is wrong. Leave that in. That's a good transition right there. That's what we call a transition in Hollywood. Mama's wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> when I was first getting started in the Airbnb, one of the things that were vital for me, like so important was cash flow. You know why? Caleb, care to guess? Because I was broke. <laughs> I had no money and so I just could not bleed from my business. So I found myself charging guests all the time. You know, every little thing. If something cost me five bucks to replace, I would ask the guests for it. And most of the time it actually worked out, but there's just so many reasons that you don't want to do that. And a lot of the more green hosts in the community tend to do this. And I totally understand why, because the new short-term rental investor tends to be very frugal and very cheap. And they're just trying to hold on to as much as possible. And also to be fair, one of my very first places that I booked was kind of cheap, right? It was a budget place. I was charging between 99 bucks to 125 a night, sometimes 149, somewhere in there. But a lot of the times I was hosting groups of five in my little 600 square foot apartment, and it was five people that were splitting the cost of this little apartment. So they were always a little bit rowdier. They were always leaving my place in, not shambles, but a little bit rougher condition than I would have liked. Now, when it comes to actually filing a claim, that part's actually not that hard. So you can charge a deposit for your stay, and Airbnb will collect that deposit. But I've always found that that deposit, especially in the early days, was kind of pointless because it's not like they really hold that deposit. And if you file a claim and it's higher than that deposit, you can ask the guest to pay for it. And the guest, for the most part, like 90% of the time will pay for it. But even if they don't, Airbnb a lot of the times was like siding with me when I was first getting started. And these days, if I'm being honest, they're siding with me a little bit less than I'd like. So let's talk about the real issue here with charging guests, like what it all comes down to. A guest can have an awesome stay, like a full five-star experience, and they were gonna leave you a great review. But just by the notion of you charging them for something that was actually their fault or something they broke, for example, that right there is gonna knock a star off your rating. Not 100% of the time, not guaranteed or anything like that. I've actually collected money from people that still left me a five-star review, but for the most part, if you think about it, if you charge someone for something that they think could be petty, for example, if they broke a wine glass and then you charge them 10 bucks to replace it, in their mind, they might say, okay, I don't know, 10 bucks, it was an accident. Like, why are you charging me $10? That's, I already paid you two or 300 bucks to stay here. Is it really necessary to charge me the 10 bucks. Now, whether they're right or wrong about that philosophy is irrelevant, but you have to understand their thought process. And so because of that, they're gonna say, well, okay, you're charging me 10 bucks for this wine glass, but I found a hair in the sink when I checked in and I didn't say anything about it. So you know what? I'm gonna pay it, but I'm gonna let you have it in the review. And then all of a sudden, now maybe you have a three-star review. Maybe you have a two-star, who knows? I've had instances where I have charged guests money and um, this was definitely their fault because they damaged the place or it was super dirty. I can't remember off the top of my head. And they left me a one-star review. Now, luckily in those instances, I've had Airbnb side with me and actually remove those reviews. A lot of the times if a guest retaliates with a bad review, then you can actually reach out to Airbnb and then they'll remove it for retaliation because it does actually go against the terms of service. But regardless, even if they do remove the review, the amount of effort that it goes through and the stress that it's gonna create to communicate with the guests and fight with the guests and then Airbnb sides with you or doesn't side with you, like it's better to just not go through it at all, point blank. It actually got to the point where we were just playing this little stupid game where we were would have like some kind of damage. My cleaner would report it to me. I would then reach out to the guest and say, hey, I hope you enjoyed your stay. Do you think you could leave me a five-star review? I would really appreciate that. Could you do that like today? And then they would leave me the five-star review and then boom, I would charge them because they couldn't go back and change the five-star review because I would have left the review and those reviews stay permanent. And I had to play this game all the time when I was getting started and it felt a little like scummy, if I'm being honest, like let me just put it out there. I was not super happy with that. And again, that just goes into the stress and the, the manipulation and this 
whole like getting in your head and how do I handle this situation? Like that all plays into why my philosophies on charging guests have completely changed. But here's the good news. If you stick around until the very end of the video, there's actually a solution to this now. So stay tuned for that. So what is my philosophy now? Now, if you're a cheap host, you're not gonna like this. If you're an experienced host, you'll probably agree that when it comes to damages, they are just a cost of doing business. And so what does this mean? If it's something that I can easily replace and it's under, we'll call it like 50 bucks, maybe even 75 bucks, I'm not really gonna reach out to guests about this. There are certain exceptions to this, but for the most part, before shooting this video, I actually went into my Airbnb resolution center and I looked at all the times that I've charged guests for issues, for cleaning, for whatever. And really in the last year, I would say I've probably charged guests like three times. So I actually kind of realized this a little bit early on. And really when it came to replacing things, I was wasn't charging guests for that. The only time that I was really reaching out to guests, and this is the hard one because you have to choose your battles with this, but I was charging guests mostly whenever they were leaving the place like excessively dirty, like super dirty to the point where my cleaners would reach out and say like, hey, this place is ridiculous. Like it's so, it's gonna take me twice as long to clean. Now, depending on how generous or courteous or like if I didn't wanna ruffle feathers, depending how I was feeling, I would either pay the cleaner myself or I would reach out to the guests and I would say, hey, my cleaner said that you left the place in not great condition and and I'm gonna have to charge you an extra cleaning fee. Now, go watch my cleaning fee video that I put out like a couple weeks ago, where I really give my POV on cleaning fees and how they are meant to pay cleaners to come and clean a house that is in pretty decent condition. If it's in ridiculous condition, then I do think that you should pay for excessive cleaning damages. Nowadays, if a place is super dirty, I really don't charge guests all that often, like not really, because I tell my cleaners, like you have to choose your battles. And so whenever I'm briefing them on an Airbnb, I tell them this exact same thing. I'm like, listen, sometimes you're you're gonna have a really clean Airbnb and it's gonna take you two hours to clean. Sometimes you're gonna have a really dirty Airbnb and it's gonna take you four hours to clean. Please don't ask me to pay you more on those times because I'm not gonna pay you less when it's a really easy clean. And so I've always had that understanding with all of my cleaners for, for the most part. Like some of them are a little bit like flighty on that one sometimes and so we'll, we might have to compensate them extra. All right, so that's my philosophy on cleaning. And then like I said, when it comes to items that are actually like lost, stolen, broken, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that 50 to $75 range is where I would charge someone for the most part. It actually just comes down to convenience more than anything. If it's an item, then I'm probably not gonna charge a guest for it. However, uh, if you look at the three photos that I'm cycling here, these are three different instances. One was someone punched a hole or dented the wall, and then they actually took the curtain rod out of the wall. Another one was a guest dented the fridge because one of their friends broke into the house and then like punched it and dented it or something like that. And then the other one was a guest who brought an emotional support animal. It wasn't, and I know it wasn't, but we'll talk about that in a whole nother video. And left hair everywhere and Airbnb did not have my back on that one. That was super annoying. So all to say in those instances, it's not really an item that I can just easily replace. And it's an item that can make me look bad as a host to other guests because they're like, whoa, dented fridge, this is kind of crummy. Or like, whoa, the curtain is ripped out of the wall. Like, you know, that that's a bad experience for a guest. And it's super inconvenient for me to get a contractor or a handyman out there to replace it in time. So when it's something that's an inconvenience for me from a time aspect, I will charge the guest. The other time that I sort of bend a little bit on this rule is if it's like a 50 to $75 item and it's a one night stay and that one night stay was like 125 bucks. If I'm not really making that much money on you and you were careless and you broke something that was like 50 bucks, I'm gonna charge you because it's like, come on man, I'm not making that much money on your reservation. Something like that could put me at a loss for that reservation. So what it all comes down to for me now and what I've learned as someone who's been hosting for about five years is that it's not so much about the money. Not really, not anymore. Cash flow is not really my target the way it used to be. It's really about reviews. It's about five-star reviews. Like that's really what it comes down to for me. I'm just trying to provide a good experience. And even if the guest is a bad guest, I don't want them to leave me a bad review because I charge the money. I'd rather that bad guest at least leave me a five-star review so I get something out of the reservation, right? So I just choose my battles and I encourage you to choose your battles too, because it's really not worth nickel and diming your guests for five, 10, 15, 20, 30 bucks. Even if it is something that's going to put you at a slight loss for that night, I think that the five-star review is going to make you way more money in the long run than the 30 bucks that you're gonna get from filing a claim and going through that whole issue. So that was my philosophy because once you involve the guests and then you start accusing them and <laughs> you also have all the guests that are like, I didn't do that. It was already broken when I checked in and then it's like, well, not really. I know it wasn't. And they're like, yes, it was. And then just with that whole little argument, even if they're lying to you, they're still gonna leave you a four or three star review because in their mind, they actually believe it now that you've made them so defensive and it's, it's just not worth it. It really is not, I promise you. So this is where you have to learn the tough lesson of damages are a cost of doing business. 
new rugs, all that kind of stuff. It's a cost of doing business. And then there's also the aspect of if it truly was an accident, if a guest did spill wine on your sheets and then they stained them and you got to swap them. Yeah, they're probably more than happy to pay if they offered to pay. I'll take it. But, you know, I'm a little bit more understanding these days than I used to be. And again, I just want that five star review. If I help that guest fix that situation that they created, they're going to leave me a five star review. So that's my overall philosophy on that. I just don't like to involve guests if I don't have to. But there actually is a solution to this. And typically I would say this video is brought to you by Guesty and then run the 60 second ad. But I figured let's jump into the studio and talk about damage protection by Guesty and actually show you the nuts and bolts of this new awesome feature. All right, cool. Let's do it. Because it also, admittedly, it's like really hot out here. Rob's damp. All right, let's go. Okay, so I'm watching back the edit and I wanted to quickly clarify that damage protection is available for both Guesty for Pros platform if you're managing four plus units and Guesty for Hosts platform if you're managing anywhere from one to three units. For the purposes of this video, I wanted to show you how it works for Guesty for Hosts. Cool? All right, let's jump in. And we're back in the studio and it is much chillier in here. I am much drier and that's always a good thing you know, here on the Rob Elt channel. All right, so let's backtrack a little bit because if you follow the channel, then you probably already know that I use a property management system to self-manage my entire portfolio. When you have any amount of short-term rentals, if you try to manage them all through Airbnb or Verbo or booking.com, things are gonna be falling through the cracks all the time. And so for me, I just found myself really like scrambling to leave messages and, and then message guests and then leave them reviews and then ask for reviews and oh man, it was it was just like, and it all worked and I was able to do that when I had one property. I did it pretty well, but then I got two properties and then I got less good at doing that. And then I had three, and then I had four, and then things really started falling through the cracks. So then I started to ask myself, how can I automate my job as a host? And that's where I started to find property management systems super, super useful. Now these days, the specific property management system that I'm using is Guesty for Hosts. And you can actually go back to one of my videos where I talk all about self-management, how I'm able to manage my 14, 15 units, and how I'm able to do all of that through the Guesty for Hosts platform. Now, the reason I like this platform specifically, is they save me from a lot of the pain points that come along with Airbnb, specifically scheduling cleaners. This is a big one for me. You know, previously I was having to export the iCal links from Airbnb to my cleaner's phone. And if they didn't have an iPhone, smartphone, whatever, then I would have to text them and say, hey, this guest is checking out this day. Can you come and clean this day? And then we would go back and forth and try to schedule it. You can actually automate all of that through Guesty. And the same thing with messages. I have templates that I send out to guests whenever they confirm a booking, whenever they're about to check in, checking in on them after they check check in, check out instructions, and then a reminder to leave me reviews. It's not sustainable for me to do this with over a dozen listings manually, and it's honestly just not the best use of my time. All right, so I just named a couple of my favorite features. They have a bunch of other things here. You can actually book a direct booking website through Guesty for Hosts. You can download income reports that can compile all the different reservations you had and then tally up how much you made from that and then all the cleaning fees, how much you paid to that. And it's actually laid out very nicely and super easy to do as well. There's smart pricing if you're a dynamic pricing nerd, and then smart locks, this is actually a cool one. If you've got a compatible smart lock, it'll sync with Guesty for hosts. And it'll actually swap out the key code on that smart lock for every new guest. And then you can set it to be the last four digits of that guest's phone number. So it's very easy for them to remember too. So I'm not gonna get too far into this today because like I said, I did a whole tutorial on this a few months ago. Go check that out, but they actually have a bunch of new features. So if you want an updated tutorial with all the new different features, leave me a comment down below and maybe I'll do it. Most of the time, life pro tip, if all y'all want me to do something, I typically will make the video. By the way, if you wanna try Guesty for hosts completely for free for two weeks, you can do so by clicking the link in my description down below. All right, so let's get into the feature that I'm most excited about, and this is damage protection by Guesty. So their whole thing with this rollout is full protection with zero friction. And I think what this means is they want you to feel like your home is fully protected from damages, from parties, from things that guests might break or steal or anything like that. They want you to be fully protected in those instances, and they don't want you to feel like there is gonna be any friction between you and a guest. Because like I talked about, this is a very stressful aspect of being a host, right? If something breaks in that 50 to $75 range I was talking about, like that's my rule. But what if it's $49, right? Right. What if it's right under my threshold? I'm still gonna be putting a lot of thought into whether or not I wanna charge a guest for, right? And then I get super worried about the retaliation that's gonna come from the guest. But with damage protection, you can avoid the whole chasing down your guests, asking for money, and still get the full coverage that you deserve. All right, so looking at the website here, here are some of the more common damages that they would cover. This includes things like appliances. So my fridge that had the giant dent, place it right here, Caleb, please. I'd imagine that something like that would probably have been covered through damage protection, furnishings, stains. This is a huge one actually, because if you're a host and you don't have a leather couch, leather couches are expensive. If you have a cloth couch, like if someone spills wine on your couch, and let's just say it's like a tan couch, you get into some very like wishy-washy territory here because if it's like a $1,200 couch, you can't really charge the guest 1,200 bucks. The best thing you could do is charge them for, I mean, I guess you could, but you're not gonna win that one probably, but you could charge them for a cleaning. And let's say that cleaning is 180 bucks and they pay 
pay it, probably not gonna get that wine stain out of your couch, is, is my guess. So something like this would probably come in the clutch in that type of situation. Kitchenware, so that, this will actually have saved me probably a lot of money on wine glasses and mugs throughout the years, but hey, whatever. So that one adds up. I mean, if I had a dollar for every cup that I've replaced over my five years of hosting, I wouldn't need to host anymore. Towels and linens, if I had a dollar for every towel that I had to replace, or a pillowcase that I had to replace because I had a guest that came in with like pink hair or purple hair that stained the towel or the pillowcase, I would not need to host anymore. Bed bugs, oh man. Bed bugs is huge because I just had a situation where we had a bed bug scare. We didn't actually end up having bed bugs. They were bat bugs and we were able to remediate it. Just the actual notion of it being a bed bug literally shut down our listing for six weeks through Airbnb. Six weeks and we didn't even have bed bugs. Had we had bed bugs, we would have been shut down a lot longer and we would have been out a lot of money and the remediation for bed bugs, it's like thousands of bucks. So the fact that you can get protection for something like that. See, if you're an Airbnb host, bed bugs are your biggest nightmare ever. Like truly, biggest thing I'm scared of are freaking bed bugs. I'm so lucky I've never had to deal with it. But the fact that I can actually protect myself against that now from a claim standpoint, pretty huge. And then smoking odor, I've actually had people smoke in my place, never ends up being a good thing for the next guest that comes in and complains about it. So for the most part, they have perfectly encapsulated all of the things that stress me out of a host under one protection plan, which I think is pretty cool. So all in all, looks like the claim process is actually pretty easy. Take a photo, replace the item, keep the receipt, file the claim. And lastly, get your money back. I'd like to say the Airbnb process is that easy, but it has been known to be a little clunky over the years. Let's take a look here at the plans and the pricing because I feel like that's probably important to be upfront about. All right, so it looks like at the low end, it's 45 bucks that would cover you for up to 3,000 bucks, which honestly, I'm not really sure you would need that much more coverage, but nice to know that we can go up from, from here. And then the top end is 75 bucks for $20,000 of protection. I guess there are some things I can think of, like if they throw a huge party and destroy all your stuff, 20,000 bucks goes a long way. But their best value here is gonna be 60 bucks for $10,000 of coverage, which should really get you out of the doghouse for most things, like dented refrigerator. Or, you know, if like four bears break into your chalet because your guests accidentally left the home and left the slider doors open and let mama bear and three bears into the house. This is actually something that happened to me in a video that's coming out, so be sure to keep an eye out on that. Someone threw a party. Oh my God, I've heard of so many times where people threw parties and it resulted in like 10, $20,000 of damage. Like you just need one catastrophic thing to happen every single year, truly, like one thing for this to make sense, right? One $10,000 occurrence that you paid out of pocket would probably make you regret not just paying the 5,400 bucks per year. I actually think it's a pretty good value. It's kind of like insurance plus, right? You still need your homeowner's insurance, but that's not really gonna cover things in that $5,000 range because you have deductibles and it's not really worth it for you to pay the deductible and then take the insurance hit and then have your quote go up. So I think this would provide really great peace of mind if you have a property that produces good cash flow and this is not gonna eat into your returns too much. If you have a smaller property that doesn't cash flow a lot, obviously it's probably not gonna make a lot of sense to go with the $60 version, but math it out and see what's worth it for you. Like I said, you just need one catastrophic instance for this to make sense. Oh yeah, and also the really nice thing here is that if you already use Guesty for hosts like I do, then it's actually really nice because you already have all of your listings imported here if you're using Airbnb and Verbo, meaning you don't really have to do much outside of the platform. It's all integrated. You can add it to all of your listings, or if you don't wanna cover all your listings, you could exclude certain listings um, like my chalet here, and then you would go to next, confirmation. I've read the terms, boom, boom, boom. Then you can confirm, easy peasy. Yeah, so really nice because damage protection covers all reservations across all distribution channels. It's, it doesn't matter if your reservation came from a direct booking website, booking.com, Airbnb, Verbos. All in all, pretty inclusive, pretty easy to sign up for. So, big fan, I like it. That's my review. Rob Bill approved, all right? I'm hungry, I'm gonna go eat. That's it, that's the end of the video. Don't forget, if you wanna sign up for Guesty for hosts and you want a free two week trial, be sure to click the link down in the description below. And then yeah, you can kind of mess around, poke around at all the features, see what you like, and then you can even sign up for damage protection and never have to worry about damages again, all right? So yeah, and if you wanna learn how to host the way I host and learn from me and my philosophies and how to launch an Airbnb and learn my whole business plan from A to Z, then consider booking a free call with my team over at hostcamp.com and I'll teach you everything I know about establishing a successful short-term rental business. Cool? All right, catch you on the next episode of Rob Belt. Bye.